All right, hello again, guys. We are here for reflections in topic 8.2. A reflection is still a transformation because it keeps the size of the shape, uh, the distances, the angle measures, all of that all stays the same. The only thing that happens is your shape will look different. So what we see here is we have a line of reflection. We're calling this line of reflection M. And that is the line in which every point gets reflected. Now to reflect individual points, we come to the line at a perpendicular or a 90 degree angle. And then that same exact distance that we've traveled, we go the opposite direction uh, in that still 90 degree fashion and get to our prime point, our reflected point. So if we come down here and you look at reflecting points P and Q over this line M, pause the video and try to reflect both of these points. So what we end up seeing here is because Q is on the line, when we reflect it on that line, it stays exactly where it is. So Q prime is at that same location. And then P, we come to our line M at 90 degrees. We go the exact same distance, the opposite direction, and we get to our P prime point. All right, so here we're going to practice reflecting across the axes. And this is actually the most common type of reflection you'll make. So here we have the point negative 3, 4 already plotted for you. We're going to try to reflect that across the y axis first and then across the x axis second. So I went ahead and color coded this. I'm going to do the y axis in blue. So pause the video and try to do both of these. There actually is an error in the notes right here. This point is actually negative 4, 5. So I need to correct that as well. So when we made this, we put the crosshairs at the wrong place. So now we're at negative 4, 5. Now reflect that point. So to reflect over the y-axis, we see how far away we are from the y-axis, which we can count and see that's 4. So then I go 4 away the opposite direction, keeping that 90 degree angle, that perpendicular line, and I see that my prime point on the y-axis is just there at positive 4, positive 5. So if you have yet to reflect the x-axis, do so now. So then from the x-axis to get to our point is 5 up, so we go the opposite direction, 5 down, and then we'll place our prime point right down there. So there's our prime point at negative 4, negative 5. Go ahead try this one. Draw the reflection image of this shape. Now we have the line going through the shape. So now everything on the left will flip to the right, everything on the right will flip to the left, and anything on the line will stay on the line. So my smart tab is not functioning right now, but hopefully you brought your A point straight over to here, your D point straight over there, C comes over just a little bit, B stays where it is, E would come down to the bottom, F stays where it is, and then we'd connect everything, um, and this would just be the opposite. So what we're being asked to do here, this notation means a reflection over the line x equals negative 3 of the point u. Now remember, our hoi vux, our vertical lines, use the x. So x equal to negative 3 means that when x is negative 3, that creates a vertical line right over here that then I can reflect my point U across. Now U is going to come directly to the line, so it's two spaces that way, so it will go two spaces this way, which puts my U prime out here, and then determine what would be the coordinate value of that. So that then makes my answer for number one, the point in negative five, negative three. So then try number two, if you have not yet, pause the video, we wanna reflect across the X axis, point V. And when we look at its distance from the x-axis, we see that it's 1 up, so I do the opposite. I go 1 down, so v prime is at positive 1, negative 1. So essentially what our properties are telling us here is everything that I said earlier, that we preserve the um, distances, that we pre preserve the um, angle measures, and that every point has to have a pre-image and an image point. All right, so then when we look at numbers three and four, our first step is to graph our JAG, our JAG triangle. And uh, so it'll be the, the same triangle for both three and four. The difference is, is that th in three, you're being asked to reflect on a Y line, Y being equal to negative five, and in four, you're being asked to reflect an X line. So remember our hoi vux, horizontal uses the Y, vertical uses the X. Pause the video and actually draw these shapes and their reflections.
And you always want to make sure you label every point with at least what letter corresponds with it so that when you make this reflection, you're able to know what prime point goes where. So in our line y equals 5, we come up to the y equals, so we come on our vertical axis. Our line y equals 5 is right here. So then when we reflect every point, notice that point A is on the line, so it will not be reflected. It just stays right there. J gets reflected, and so does G. So again, my drawing is really poor because uh, my smart tab is not working, but here is essentially what you would get. Your triangle J prime, A prime, G prime, um, and your A prime would still be on that line right there. If you have not done so, try number four. So here's my line x equals 2. We can see it cuts right through the middle of my shape, which is perfectly fine because then when I go to reflect those points, a is 1 to the right, so it goes 1 to the left. So there's my a prime. j is 1 to the left down here, so it goes 1 to the right down here. And because g is on the line, my g prime is just on the line. And then we connect the dots, and we have our final triangle. So then when we're trying to write reflection rules, like here we're looking at figure 3. And we're trying to write a reflection rule for how this figure can be a reflected image or have a reflected image with another one. So if we compare line N, it doesn't feel like there's anything out here. So now let's look at line J. Well, if I came perpendicular here, I'd end up headed that way. If I come perpendicular here, I'd end up heading that way. And if I keep doing that, I can see that I can actually match up pretty much all my points. So we could write a reflection rule relating figure one to figure three. So if you have yet to do so, pause the video and try to write a reflection rule for each of these, figure three, figure two, and figure four. Um, here are the solutions. Possible rules that you might have written. Line J is perpendicular bisector of the line segments between. So that's because if I draw these line segments between figure one and three, we see that the line is the perpendicular bisector. Same thing for figure two. We see that N is directly between two and four, so that would create a perpendicular bisector, as well as figures four and two at the end, just relating four to two, just like I related two to four. So please make sure you look to the Pearson module for problem four, looking at proving isosceles triangles. Now we move on to the got it, where we're looking at trying to solve the equilateral. So the problem here is that equilateral triangles, we know, have three sides that are all the same. That's equi means equal or the same. So if this was equilateral, HG would have to be equal to GJ, would have to be equal to HJ. And just based on reflections, there's no way that with what I know, this can be proven. Now, if I knew a little bit more, or if I could do a little bit more, I might be able to, but I don't know that those are equal, so right now, I cannot prove this. So now look at number seven here. We want to perform a reflection across the y-axis for point H. So I've got the y-axis here highlighted, I've got point H. So all we need to do is make this line, this axis, the perpendicular bisector between H and H prime. So go ahead, pause, and try. And then go ahead and try eight on your own as well. And when we try to reflect point G across the line of X equal to three, remember that X creates uh, vertical lines. So we create that vertical line at X equal to three. We see that G is one away. So then I go one the opposite direction. To find my G prime is at four, two. That's how I get my result. All right, that is all I really have for you for eight, two. So please make sure you have worked through Pearson and do your homework. And please let me know if you need any help. Thanks and have a great day.